Hello and welcome to our UC Berkeley virtual visit. We're going to wait a few moments here to make sure that everyone enters the webinar. All right, hello and welcome to our UC Berkeley virtual visit. My name is Morgan and I'm going to be the moderator today. I am a rising junior from Modesto, California. I use the pronoun she, her, hers, and I'm double majoring in history and political science. I just wanted to take a moment to thank all of you for tuning in today to watch our virtual visit, especially because of everything that is going on in the world right now. We as a community want you to know that we acknowledge and recognize the challenges and pain that is stemming from everything that is going on, and we stand with you. I want to invite you to read our Chancellor's message on news.berkeley.edu to learn more about how we as a community are responding and what we stand for. So again, thank you so much for being here. And we're gonna get started with our virtual visit today with some housekeeping. So today's presentation is going to be an hour total, 40 minutes of which are going to be a PowerPoint. But we do have a Q&A section where you can ask any questions, although the chat function has been disabled. We have a slew of campus ambassadors on the back end, ready and excited to answer all of your questions. So please type them away in the Q&A function. Please try to ask them uh, in the first 40 minutes of the presentation. That way you have a chance to get them answered in the second part of our presentation, which will be a live Q&A. We're gonna have polls several times throughout this presentation, so please answer those. And this will be recorded, but a different version will be available on our website, as well as our YouTube channel if you'd like to come back and review. This is mainly going to be a campus overview from the student's perspective, so talking mostly about campus culture and life. There's not gonna be any specific admissions or financial aid information, but if you would like to find some more about that, you can register for an admissions presentation on their website. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna end with that live Q&A, so please ask all of your questions prior to that. And with that being said, we're gonna introduce our two campus ambassadors for today. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our virtual visit. My name is Emmeline. I use the pronoun she, her, hers. Um, I am a rising sophomore and coming to you from Elisa Viejo, California, which is in South Orange County. Um, I am an intended double major in business as well as public health. Um, regarding my involvement here at UC Berkeley, I work in the office of ASUC Senator Rebecca Sue. The ASUC is our student government uh, body. And within her office, I am on the UIC board or Unity in Christ. Um, I am a Christian and am very heavily involved um, with the Christian community on campus. Um, the fellowship I attend is Reformed University Fellowship. So if you have any questions about religion or what it means to practice your faith on campus, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, and besides those things, um, I am involved with Hands and Feet, which is a club that goes out each weekend to serve our homeless population in Berkeley, as well as an I am volleyball team. Um, and with that, I will introduce Kara. Hi, everyone. My name is Kara, and I use the pronouns she, her, and hers. I'm from Valencia, California, which is in SoCal, but I'm coming at you live from Berkeley right now. I am a rising junior studying media studies and sociology which are both in the College of Letters and Science, which we'll get into a little bit farther in the tour. I'm involved in the UC Rally Committee, which is a spirit group here on campus. I'm also involved in Greek life. So if you have any questions about sororities or fraternities, ask those in the little Q&A function. I'm also a lifeguard on campus and I have an off-campus internship at a wine PR company. And I hope you enjoy our tour today. Yeah, once again, we just want to officially welcome you all to UC Berkeley to our virtual visit. Um, we're super excited to have you and hope that we can provide the information that you guys are looking for. Um, you should see a poll that has just popped up on your screen. Um, this is just asking, who are you? We want to get a better idea of who our audience is today so that we can make sure we cater our tour to um, what you guys are going through. Um, and it looks like we have a lot of high school rising seniors, which is super exciting. You guys are going through the application process. Um, the UC application is up now. Um, and so, yeah, we just wish all of you the best of luck with that. Um, if you look at the photos on the screen, we have a couple things that just 
provide a little insight into what UC Berkeley life is like. Um, on the top left, you will see our D1 Cal football team playing in Memorial Stadium. Um, unfortunately, I am not sure if we are going to be able to have football games this um, fall, uh, but hopefully by the time you rising seniors are able to get here, that will be something that you guys can take part in. Um, and on the right, you will see some students just hanging out on um, Memorial Glade, which is a big open field of grass in front of Doe Memorial Library, as well as our beloved Campanile. Um, a lot of students choose to go there on sunny days to do homework, hang out with friends, sometimes even take a nap. Um, so it's a really great place to be. Um, and in the middle, you will also see another photo of the Camp O'Neilly or Sather Tower, which is um, our beloved clock and bell tower at the middle of campus. Um, and on the bottom corners, you will see 150 W on the left. Um, as that is, we are celebrating 150 years of women here at Berkeley, which we are very proud of. Um, as well as in 2018, we were celebrating our 150th year um, of life, of our anniversary of Berkeley. So yeah, let's get started. Um, first, I wanted to go over a brief agenda. Um, so we are gonna start with an overview of Berkeley. So that's the history and founding um, and things you may be interested in. We are then gonna go into academics, housing and dining, health and safety, student resources, student life, athletics, libraries and research, as well as campus highlights. So a lot um, going on for you guys. Please don't hesitate to ask those Q&A questions below as they come up. All right, so we're starting with a little bit of an overview about Berkeley. So we were founded in 1868, and you might have heard us be called UC Berkeley, Cal, the University of California. Those all refer to UC Berkeley. And we were the first of the nine undergraduate UC schools. So there's a whole system that includes schools like UCLA and UCSB. That's all the UC schools, but we were the first, so that's why we can be called University of California and you can get some cool UC swag all around campus. Our mascot is the golden bear and we have Oski, which is our beloved mascot running around. He's got this very nice yellow sweater. You see him on game days or sometimes just walking around campus. We have about 30,000 undergraduates on campus and almost 12,000 graduates. So we are a pretty large school, but our campus is big and walkable and you find lots of friends here, which makes the campus smaller. So here are a couple pictures from around our campus. On the left, you'll see Sather Gate, which is the main walkway into campus. It actually used to mark the start of campus. We've expanded a little bit past it now. But right by Sather Gate, there used to be a cable car turnaround. So you could ride the cable car all the way from Berkeley to San Francisco. It would drop you right off at the start of campus. And now it welcomes you into more of our academic buildings. And right below it, there's a huge walkway called Sproul Plaza. And that's where you can find a lot of clubs handing out flyers or advertising for things that they're doing. Next, we have Sturdy the Bear, who welcomes you to California Memorial Stadium. He is right there in the middle, that bear statue. And actually right now, all of our bear statues on campus have masks reminding you to be safe, which I think is really cute and fun. In the top right corner, we have a picture of one of the seals that are around Memorial Glade. And there's a superstition on campus that if you step on one of those, you're going to fail all your finals, you won't get a 4.0. And so you will see students walking to their next class, distinctly avoiding that seal on the floor, because you know, you just don't want to risk it. Whether you believe in it or not, you just kind of little, don't want to walk past that. And then on the bottom, you will see Oski giving you a nice thumbs up. He was that golden bear mascot that I was talking about earlier. He's, some people are scared of him, this is true, but he's lovable, friendly, just give him a high five. He's great. And going more into our campus culture, in that picture again, you will see more of Sather Gate that I was just talking about. Here at Berkeley, we are change makers, and that kind of started with the free speech movement in the 1960s, and Berkeley's campus was kind of the main place for all of that to happen, and you can see that there's a protest right there. If you've heard of Mario Savio, he gave one of his famous speeches on our steps, which you can go right up to today, and we still have rallies and protests and things like that on campus right there. There's, we are also leaders on campus, and we emphasize 
just wanting to challenge the status quo and get, put our best foot forward. We are entrepreneurs and we want to thrive in whatever we do. We also have a great sense of community here on campus. We are all compassionate. We have so many different passions that all just come together at Berkeley and everyone is super supportive of all those passions. And we also thrive with our social justice. And we are diverse and we want to show our excellence to the world. And the class of, I believe it's 2024, so the class that we just admitted was the most diverse in the past 30 years that Berkeley has admitted, which is pretty cool and pretty great steps in the right direction. And just a few more pictures to give you a sense of the community here on campus. You can see on the top left, there's a protest happening, a rally to show their, their passions. And this is students from all around campus. And then you can also see that we are involved in research. And then there's some more spirit with OSCE again and the rally committee in those striped shirts, which I'm a part of. And then in the bottom left, you can see a rally before a football game with the cheerleaders and the band. They're just hyping you up, getting you excited to cheer on the Golden Bears. And you can see some more research happening with that robot in the middle. And then finally, you can see some sky dancers on the side of our Campanile. They did that for the Campanile's anniversary, which I unfortunately was not here to see because I was not here yet. But I still think it's pretty cool that we had people dancing along the side of a building. So there's so many different things that happen at Berkeley and so many different things you can get involved in. Yeah, thanks for that, Kara. Um, now we're going to go into a little bit more about our academics. So once again, you should see a poll on your screen, um, just asking what your interests are in. Um, and we're excited to see what you guys are interested in. Um, while you guys are doing that, I did want to give a brief overview of our undergraduate colleges. We have five here at Cal. Our biggest one is the College of Letters and Science. We have the Rouser College of Natural Resources, the College of Environmental Design, the College of Chemistry, and the College of Engineering. So a lot of different options for you guys. Um, I also did want to mention as well, um, when you apply to Berkeley, you will be admitted to one of these five colleges. However, we understand that interests change as you take new classes, um, and there may be uh, a chance of you wanting to switch colleges. So transferring between colleges is very possible. Um, I do want to mention though that if you are trying to transfer into the College of Chemistry or the College of Engineering, it is slightly more competitive and maybe harder for you to do, but definitely doable for sure. I would just say make sure to talk to your advisor um, so that you get all of your prerequisite classes done on time so that you can graduate on time. Um, and it looks like you guys are interested a lot of in engineering and the social sciences. Um, so we're definitely going to make sure to go into those. Um, and as we've said before, continue to give us those questions that you may have in the Q&A section below. All right, thank you, Emmeline. So going more in depth into those colleges that she just mentioned, we'll talk first about the College of Letters and Science, which is my home college for both of my majors. This is a pretty big college. It has about 75% of the entire undergraduate population, which is a lot, but there's so many different majors here, so many different things for you to get involved in. There's five main divisions, arts and humanities, the biological sciences, the mathematical and physical sciences, the social sciences, and just undergraduate studies. So there are over 80 majors in those five divisions. And what's really cool about this college is that there is a breadth requirement. So if you are really, really super pumped about sociology, you still are gonna have to take a class on the biological sciences just to make sure you get a well-rounded education. So for me, I actually got to take a class on dinosaurs, which is really cool. Nothing with anything of either of my majors, but was still super interesting and counted as my biological sciences requirement. And since that helps my graduation, my, that class was useful and I learned a lot of fun things in there. Yeah, I'm a little bit biased as well because I'm in the College of LNS, but um, we're now going to move on to the Rouser College of Natural Resources, which is another one of our amazing colleges here at Berkeley. Um, this is where um, all of the majors that are environmentally focused will be housed. So we have 
a lot of different programs like environmental science, um, environmental economics, interdisciplinary studies, energy, forestry, biosciences. Um, and within all of these programs, there are a lot of different majors that you can choose from. So if you are interested in sustainability and social justice and um, just environmentally friendly things in general, this might be the place for you. I have a handful of friends in this college as well that absolutely love it. Um, and so this might be a place for you to be. Um, and it is housed in this beautiful building on the right. That is Lee Koshing. Um, so yeah. And this is similar to, similar vibe to the environmental. Um, this is our College of Environmental Design. It is CED for short. It is by far our smallest college on campus. Um, there are only three departments, architecture, landscape architecture, and city and regional planning. And their goals are to craft ecologically sustainable and resilient, prosperous and fair, as well as healthy and beautiful built environments. Um, so if you're interested in buildings that are, um, environmentally and ecologically sustainable and friendly, this might be the place for you. Um, it is housed in Worcester Hall, which is photoed on the right. You can tell by the glass and concrete that it is made in a brutalist style, um, which is in tandem with their goals because it is very um, ecologically and environmentally friendly. Um, something cool about CED, because it is a smaller college. All students who take a lab class have access to individual office rooms um, and 3D printers and other tools that you might need to use for um, the architecture skills that you are learning, which I think is really cool. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna move on. Okay, now the College of Chemistry just also on the smaller side with about a thousand students, there are two main departments. So we have chemistry and the chemical and biomolecular engineering departments. And this college is a little bit different. You apply directly into it. And like Emmeline was saying earlier, it might be a little bit more difficult or more competitive if you are, for example, in the College of Letters and Science and decide to transfer into the College of Chemistry. So just keep that in mind if you are really going for chemistry, it might be your best bet to just apply directly into the College of Chemistry. And this college is ranked number one globally in the chemistry departments, which is amazing. The Lewis dot structures, which you might have seen for the little electrons and all those fun things, were actually created during one of our general chem classes here on UC Berkeley's campus. We've also discovered numerous elements like berkelinium, californium, laurentium, and all that just more examples of the amazing things that happen here on UC Berkeley's campus. Yes, and now to our final, but certainly not the least, college, College of Engineering. Um, so we have seven departments within COE. Um, there's bioengineering, civil and environmental engineering, electrical engineering and computer science, or EECS for short, industrial engineering and operations research, material sciences, mechanical engineering, and nuclear engineering. So a lot of different options for you guys as well. Um, there's also a special program that we have at Berkeley called the MAT program, um, or the Management Entrepreneurship and Technology Program. And what's special about this program is that if you are to apply and get into this program, you will come out of Berkeley with a dual degree in both business as well as engineering. Um, we will go more into our business school in a second, um, but that is definitely an option for you guys as well if you are hoping to learn more about the business side of engineering as well. And these photos are um, of McLaughlin Hall and Hearst Mining Circle where a lot of our engineering classes are held. So yes, like I mentioned, we are going to go into our graduate schools now and the Haas School of Business um, is my, my, has a special place in my heart as I am an intended business major. Um, so like I mentioned, there's the MET program where you can take through Haas. Um, there's also the Global Management Program or GMP for short, where um, if you apply to it directly uh, as a freshman, and if you were to get in, you would come the eight weeks of summer before your freshman year um, to campus and meet other incoming students who are, all, are also a part of the GMP program. You would then spend your first fall semester in London studying abroad. Um, I will preface with saying that I am not sure if this is still happening this semester as everything um, is going 
um, crazy in the world and I don't know if study abroad is available. However, this is a normal program that is usually available to students to apply to as well. Um, and then those GMP students after their fall semester would come back their spring uh, semester and have the quote unquote normal uh, student experience on Berkeley's campus. And if neither of those apply to you, um, you can also apply to the undergraduate program that Haas has. Um, that is what most students typically do. So it is essentially another college application. Um, usually during the fall semester of their sophomore year, some apply their junior year, but most do their fall, their fall of their sophomore. Um, you would apply with three essays, your uh, transcript and class structure, um, as well as your resume and involvement on campus. Um, and if you are admitted to the program, then you will come out of Berkeley with a bachelor's um, through the business school, which is really cool. Um, I will say that the Haas undergraduate program is fairly competitive. Um, this past class admitted acceptance rate was only 16%. So definitely competitive, but also very doable. And a lot of students do choose to go this route. Um, and besides the Haas School of Business, um, we do have other graduate schools as well. There's the School of Education, the School of Information, Berkeley Law, Social Welfare, Optometry, Journalism, Public Health, and Public Policy. So um, like Kara mentioned at the beginning, we have close to 12,000 graduate students that we're very uh, proud to have on campus as well. Um, and this is not an exhaustive list as a lot of our undergraduate departments also offer graduate programs as well. So more into this structure and class size. Um, this is Wheeler Auditorium. It is by far our largest lecture hall. I mean, you might be a little bit intimidated at first. It's okay. I was too when I first saw this photo. Um, but we have a lot of structures uh, implemented in Berkeley to make sure that you get that personalized feeling inside big lectures like this. Um, so the main thing for that is our discussion sections. Each huge lecture has discussion sections um, anywhere from one to three times a week for an hour to an hour and a half where GSIs or graduate student instructors lead those classes. Um, and that's really a time just for you to ask your more personalized questions. They, the GSIs work closely with the professors to come up with um, a structure for their discussion sections to just help supplement um, the information that you might need for any assessments, quizzes, midterms that you might have. Um, in Tana Muta, we also have office hours. So all of the professors as well as GSIs hold office hours during the week. And that is another time for you to go in and um, ask those one-on-one -on -one questions that you might have. Um, in terms of class size, we do have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, um, which is pretty impressive if you consider how big of a public school we are. Um, and 85% of our classes are fewer than 50 students. So this photo that you see is definitely exception. Don't you worry. Um, you will be able to get that individualized and personal attention that you might need for your classes to do well. Um, and we also have the Student Learning Center, which I personally love. Um, my first semester as a freshman, I took a calculus class, Math 1B, and I took an adjunct class through the Student Learning Center. Um, and I promise you, I would not have done nearly as well in that calculus class if I had not taken this class through the SLC. Um, so it's basically a tutoring resource for you. Um, you can go in at any time and there will be tutors there um, to help you and answer your questions. They are doing them virtual as well. Um, so that's still a resource for all the students, even though we are not physically there in person. All right, thank you so much, Emmeline, for all that information on our academics. We're gonna move into housing and dining now. And so we'll talk a little bit about your first year housing options and then more housing options as you move on through your total four years here. So freshmen get priority when choosing their dorms and you'll see a little poll pop up just asking you where you're joining us from. If you could fill that out for us, that would be amazing. And so freshmen get priority when choosing the dorm rooms. Just make sure you pick any room, any location as the last preference when you're filling out your housing form in order to get a housing offer. So I believe there's like five or six little drop down menus. You just select which ones you want. And then for the last one, pick any room, any location, and then you are guaranteed a housing offer. And there are lots of resources for you once you find your dorm. There's RAs or residential assistants who are living in the rooms with you. 
and they kind of help you out with any problems that you're having. They check in with you throughout the semester. They're kind of, they're older students there to help you just navigate your first year on campus. There's multiple theme programs for you if that's what you're interested in. There's like a women in STEM one. There's an environmental one located in different dorms. So definitely check that out if you want to live in one of those. There's very good security in order to get into our dorms. We'll go into that a little bit more later, but just to give you a quick overview, you'll have to use your Cal ID card to scan into the building, and then you'll check in with an advisor at the front just to make sure that you are who you say you are. And then you'll usually use a key or your ID to get into the elevator or the stairwells, and then you'll have your physical room key to get into your dorm. So super secure, lots of checkpoints to make sure that you are safe. There are also common areas throughout the dorms for you to study or just socialize in. I always was able to find a space for whatever I needed to do when I was living in the dorms. And there's lots of areas for you to kind of hang out with your friends or sit down and get some work done. The meal plan is included when you're living in the dorms, so you can check out any of our on-campus dining halls that we have a couple of them located all throughout and then you'll also get meal points where, that you can use at different like cafes on campus if you're looking to get away just take a quick little break from dorm food so i see let's see most people are from socal so hello shout out to you and thank you all for joining us even if you're in different time zones all right, so here are more about our first year housing options. We have the units, which are your typical high rise dorms. There, there's usually like five or six buildings kind of clumped around a central courtyard where you usually live in doubles or triples. This year, I believe we're making all the rooms singles to ensure safety during COVID-19. I'm not sure how that's gonna look next year when you will all be entering college, but Hopefully you will be able to live in the dorms. It was a great experience. We also have Clark Kerr, which is a little bit farther away from campus, but it has a great swimming pool. There's a track and a volleyball court. So if you're sporty, you might wanna check those rooms out. We also have Blackwell Hall, which is our newest dorm on campus. I actually lived in Blackwell during the first year it was open. Great option. It's also a high rise type building closer to campus and it's also pretty close to a dining hall which I really liked. We also have Foothill which is located more up the hill closer to like our engineering and chemistry buildings and there's also Stern which is our all-female identifying dorm so if that's something you want to look into definitely go for it. Yeah, thank you, Kara, for that information about housing. Um, we're now going to transition into health and safety. So um, regarding health, this photo on the right is of the Tang Center. It is our primary care facility where you can get all of your health care um, needs figured out. Um, and it's super uh, conveniently located right across the street from main campus. So um, definitely easily accessible. Um, in that building, there's urgent care, primary care, counseling, physical therapy, basically, like I said, anything you could ever need, you could probably find in this building. Um, I would like to mention that all students are required to have some sort of insurance plan while on campus. Um, with your student enrollment packet, you are automatically enrolled in the student health insurance plan or SHIP uh, for short. However, if you do want your own private insurance, that is definitely something that you can have as well. Um, we also have the Optometry Eye Center, which is located on campus. Um, so say that one time during your class, you realize the board's a little bit more blurry than it used to be. Um, and you could go to the center to get your eyes checked out um, and have opportunities to get affordable eyewear. Um, we also have the Path to Care, which is a service for our sexually harassed and abused um, students. And we also have stress relieving clubs as well. So there's De-Stress with Dogs, which is a club that is on Sproul, which is the main entrance to school that Kara mentioned, um, where dogs are just there playing around. Students can go and just pet, pet your stress away. Um, so you just finished a final and just really need a hug from 
a lovable buddy. Um, and that's that's definitely the club that you'd want to head straight towards. Um, we also have Llama Palooza, which is a super cool and unique event. Um, it's a day before or oh, during the week before finals, we have Llama Palooza where llamas come out to Memorial Glade and you can just take a break from your studying for your finals and pet those llamas and take selfies and send them to your friends at other colleges to make them jealous. Um, so those are definitely resources that we have for you. And more into safety, I know that this is a very important topic that my parents specifically always wanted to know about when we went to um, our campus tours. In general, we do have a on-campus police department, the UCPD. Um, they work very closely with the UC Ber or with the Berkeley Police Department as well. So you can be assured that both on campus and off campus, um, there are those people uh, there to protect you if anything were to happen. We have blue light poles all around campus, which is what this photo is of. On top of this black pole, there is a blue light, so pretty self-explanatory. Um, and if you ever feel da in danger during night or even during the day um, and just feel unsecure, you can go up to one of these blue light poles and press the button um, and UCPD will respond within 90 seconds. Um, and from any blue light pole, you can look around campus and you should be able to spot another blue light pole um, so that you are always at within eyesight of one of these places. We also have Warn Me, which is an app that UC Berkeley students can download um, so that they can get updates on what the UCPD is doing. So if there's any areas to avoid or any danger in the area, there's an update so you can make sure to avoid that area. Um, and like Kara mentioned, there is those three point security for all of the residence halls. So once again, once to, you use your student ID of checking at the door, once to go up the elevator or to the stairwell, um, and once to use your key to get into your actual room. Um, so very secure for sure. And at night, we also have um, some RAs who are sitting at the front desk to check in and make sure you're supposed to be there as well. Um, in terms of night service as well, um, we have a night safety shuttle that goes around um, from dusk until 3 a.m. where students can take um, to just go wherever they need to go. Um, all, it goes all around the campus at certain stops um, so you can get on and off at the ones that are most convenient for you. And we also have Bear Walk, which is a um, student service where students are uniformed and trained by the UCPD to uh, escort students from campus to their apartment or dorm room or wherever they need to go. Um, so say that one night you are studying really hard at a library on campus and you realize oh wow, it's two in the morning. I should probably head back to my dorm. Um, you can call Bear Walk and they will be there to walk with you to your dorm to make sure you get there safely. Okay, and now we'll talk a little bit about student resources. There are so many things available on campus to help you thrive because we want you to make the most of your four years here if you are an incoming freshman or two years here if you're an incoming transfer student. So we have the Transfer Student Center. Speaking of transfers, I actually had one of my transfer friends intern at the Transfer Student Center and she really enjoyed just helping other transfers find their way and make the most of their time they had here. We also have the Disabled Students Program. So if you need a little bit of extra help in classes, we actually have that program to help you, like if you need notes, someone will help you take really nice notes and other things like that. So if you think that you would benefit from that program, I highly recommend checking that out. We have other resources such as the Gender Equity Center, the Multicultural Community Center, the Student Development for Chicanx, Latinx, Asian American, Asian Pacific American, African American, and Native American students. So many different resources here on campus to help all of you out. We have the Cal Veteran Services, the Undocumented Students Program, and so many more. And most of these are located in the Cesar Chavez Student Center, which is central to campus, right by that sprawl that I was talking about earlier. So centrally located and easy to get to. And most of these programs are offering virtual services right now. So you can definitely check them out and they can help you out. Yeah, so now beyond academics, student life, um, we're not just coop up at desks all day. Um, yeah, there's so many things to do for students on campus. We have over 1200 different student clubs. Um, and for some reason, if 
one of those 1200 doesn't pique your interest, um, you can always make a club. And that process is super easy as well. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's, there's so many different interests that um, those clubs cover and I'm sure you'd be able to find one that um, speaks to you. Um, and besides that, we also have a lot of volunteering clubs and opportunities. There are jobs on campus this being one of them. Um, me and Kara are getting paid to do this. Um, and there are also study um, abroad options for you. I know Kara is planning on going this upcoming spring, which is super exciting. Um, and beyond that, there's also just a lot of other things to do both around campus in Berkeley. Um, there's concerts, workshops, sports games, museums, hiking, so much to do. Um, as you can tell by all the four photos on the right, all four of these things are very, very different. You see the Redwoods in the top right, um, which has beautiful hiking trails. There's um, the museum um, on the bottom right for you art lovers out there. There's the rallies and GBO. Um, and not to mention too, for students, it's a quick 25 BART, which is our Bay Area Rapid Transit. Um, it's a quick 25 minute ride to San Francisco. So I know a lot of students will go on the weekends just to hang out, go see the Golden Gate Bridge, um, hang around, you know, Maine's downtown area. Um, so a lot of options for students to have fun and have a good college experience. Awesome. Going even more into different stuff outside of academics, we have some pretty great athletics here on campus. We have three main levels of competition. We have Division One, which is like pretty intense, you know, the stuff you see on TV. We have club teams, which are less commitment than that, but still are a good chance to have fun and still be connected to a sport. And we also have intramural or recreational sports, which are Definitely more for fun. And I actually was in an intramural team with my sorority. We, I don't think we ever scored a goal, but we had a great time. Um, so our division one football team plays in California Memorial Stadium, which is up on the hill. Not too sure what the Pac-12, which is what we're a part of, has decided about playing games this year, but hopefully we'll be able to see some in the future. Um, inside California Memorial Stadium, there's the Simpson High Performance Center and the Athletic Study, Stent Study Center for athletes. There's also just a gym in there for students who live closer to that athletic facility if you want to kind of go in there and go on the treadmill. We also have Haas Pavilion, which is connected to the Recreational Sports Facility or the RSF. So in Haas, we have volleyball, gymnastics, basketball, and you can actually get into most of these things for free with your student ID card. You just have to pay for men's basketball and for football, but everything else you can just get into with your Cal ID card, which I think is great. And as a member of the rally committee, I always love going and cheering on our Golden Bears. Also in the RSF, you can take classes for Zumba or just cardio dance or spin classes, which I really enjoyed. And you can just make sure that you are both mentally fit and physically fit at the RSS. Cal also has some really great athletics just all around. We have over, we have 207 Olympic medals. And yesterday, um, Colin Morikawa, I think I'm saying that right. He won the PGA golf tournament and he actually is a Cal graduate, which is amazing. So the Golden Bears are present everywhere and we are thriving in academics and athletics. Yeah, now on to libraries and research. Um, so we have 24 official libraries on campus. Um, three of those are pictured on the screen. The top left is East Asian, which hosts the largest volume of East Asian manuscripts outside of their respective countries. Um, in the middle top is Doe Memorial, which is our um, probably most famous and photogenic library on campus. Um, and below that is the Hargrove Music Library, which hosts a variety of compositions as well as music literature. Um, so yeah, within these 24 official libraries, we have over 13 million volumes, which is kind of insane if you think about it. Um, and beyond that, we have extensive online resources as well. So with your Cal um, ID, you have 
uh, the availability to go to basically any academic literature or writing that you would need for any class. Um, so even on Zoom, you will be able to uh, get access to these resources. And regarding research, um, our most popular program to get uh, research research opportunities is the undergraduate research apprenticeship apprenticeship program um, or URAP for short. Um, basically how this works is you apply to um, your major or interest and they will respond to you about the different opportunities that are both on campus as well as in the Berkeley area. There are also department specific opportunities for research as well. So usually once a month your department will send you an email um, about all the different opportunities both within their departments and for the professors that work within their departments as well. All right, just to wrap up our more presentation section here, are a few campus highlights. You'll see the squirrels. They are everywhere on campus. Make sure you don't feed them because they are slightly vicious, but that's okay. You can see a beautiful sunset over the bay. You can see Oakland, San Francisco, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge, all from the top of Berkeley's campus, which is absolutely incredible. You can see those trees and we have great hiking trails all around. And you can get the best of both worlds here at Berkeley. We have so much nature and we have the city life. So you can explore everything here at Berkeley. All right, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Now we're gonna be moving on to our Q&A portion. So our first question is for Emmeline and someone asks, what is Berkeley's social atmosphere like? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I know there's a lot of stereotypes about Berkeley's atmosphere that goes around sometimes that, you know, it's, it's super crazy competitive academically. Um, and yes, although we do prioritize academics, the people here are actually very supportive of each other. Um, I know that all the classes that I've taken, they, you know, sometimes I've been in those 500 people lectures, um, and yet everyone just wants everyone to succeed and do the best that they absolutely can. And I've made a lot of friends through my discussion sections and in my dorm rooms. And so the social atmosphere is, is it's not um, this cutthroat, everyone's out for each other type um, that you might hear or expect of, of a, such a high um, prestigious university. Um, and beyond that too, people are we're college students. We, yes, we do study and we, you know, prioritize our academics, but we also like hanging out with our friends and going to San Francisco and hanging and like eating good food and, you know, trying new restaurants. It's so there's so much to do on campus and social life is definitely not um, something that Berkeley is lacking for sure, I would say. <laughs> I would definitely agree. One of the great things about Berkeley is we have so many student clubs and organizations that we mentioned during the presentation that it's really easy for someone to find a community where they feel like they belong, find a niche, find a social environment that they feel safe in, which is wonderful. Our next question is for Kara and someone asks, what do students do for housing after their first year? That is an awesome question and a very important question too. There's so many different things that you can live in. There's Greek housing, if you're in that, that's where I actually lived my sophomore year. And you can also just find an off-campus apartment, which is what I'm actually doing right now and looking into. And there's different places you can rent from, you can look for an apartment, you can look for a house. You can also apply again through Cal's housing portal and there are specifically like upper classmen housing options and there's also the co-op system and so that is similar to greek housing where it's like 60 to 70 people living in but with the co-ops you will be like doing chores so some people will be cleaning or cooking on a specific day of the week so everyone kind of pitches in at the co-op so there's lots of different options for you to look into and the, i think that in berkeley just there's so many cute houses and i love all the little like San Francisco kind of vibes. So there's, there's a lot of places you can go to. 
I agree. There's just so many housing options available since the area that we live in. And at least from my experience, it hasn't been too difficult to get housing, whether or not you want to continue in the dorms here next year, housing is pretty much guaranteed. Or if you want to find an apartment or you want to live in Greek housing or something like that, there are so many options and there are resources on campus to help you find those options, even if it's not with Cal Housing. Our next question is for Emmeline and uh, someone asks, what is there to do off campus? I know we touched on this a little bit and in the city of Berkeley and also in the surrounding Bay Area. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, let's start with just Berkeley. Um, within a two block radius, there are hiking trails and redwoods that you can go to, um, views where you can see the bay, um, even on campus too. There's my favorite view by the Campanile um, is like a row where you can see the Golden Gate Bridge when you're sitting there, which I think is beautiful. Um, so definitely a lot of nature, a lot of things to do like backpacking or hiking. Um, and in downtown as well, there's, I'm a big foodie. There's a lot of restaurants. I know I mentioned that in my last one too, but it's, it's important. Everyone, yeah, I love food. Um, and so, yeah, there's so many different, there's like a bunch of different boba places. I don't think I've ever been to another city with more different boba chains in my entire life. Um, and there's karaoke, there's um, other just, you know, even on campus, you can hang out on Memorial Glade and just, you know, have a picnic or um, do what Ever you want with your friends. Um, I'm personally a big coffee person as well and Berkeley has some great coffee shops so if you're a coffee person don't worry there are some awesome places for you. Um, and in the surrounding area as well I know I mentioned this too but uh, BART which is our Bay Area Rapid Transit um, it's basically a train or subway-ish type train where you can get on and go to San Francisco for really cheap um and it's really fast for 25 minutes so you don't need a car um you can just go to san francisco i know some friends would go on the weekend just to go study downtown because they wanted to get into a new environment just to clear their head and you know crank out that paper that they might have um so a lot of different options there as well um obviously there's the golden gate bridge and and famous um, landmarks in san francisco as well so if you're not from the bay area or if ever wanted to visit you definitely will be able to probably many times um, during your time at college, during your time at UC Berkeley. Um, so yeah, definitely don't worry about not having something to do because there's almost too much, I would say. I definitely don't know if I'd be able to get to everything before I graduate. I love that description of there's almost too much to do because that is so accurate. I have this ongoing list of different adventures I want to go on with my friends and different experiences I want to have. And they range from two minutes from campus to like a two hour bus ride that's still easily accessible and free for students. So you touched on some of my favorites and it uh, just makes me so happy. It makes me miss campus so much. All right, our next question is for Kara. And uh, someone asks, what are some popular extracurricular activities and how can I get a good balance of academic and social life at Berkeley? Oh my gosh, there are so many different options here on campus to, from clubs to just sports, so many different things you can get involved in. Um, one of the things that we didn't really talk about on the tour are DECALs, which is Democratic Education at Cal. And those are actually student run classes. And so you just get to like learn about basically whatever they want to teach about. So there's been a class on baking, which I know is just really popular. There's Avengers, there's Harry Potter. So I think th those are super, super cool. And you also get class, class credit for them, which is great. And it can be difficult to find that balance between academics and social life. But I think that's a diff difficult balance that you have to find wherever you go. And Berkeley, all of us, know that yes you need to do your classwork and you need to write papers and study for your finals so i think everyone kind of understands that yeah you do need to do that but also everyone is like yeah you want to go like maybe go to a coffee shop in san francisco and study and kind of just get out of the berkeley area but still be productive and that is actually one of my favorite things to do just kind of head out to the city and work on a paper just grind it out at a coffee shop so it's a difficult balance to find for sure, but I have confidence that you will be able to find it. 
That's some great advice. Just to add on to it, you can choose your own schedule in college, which is one of the most amazing things. And so sometimes you might have a two or three hour gap between classes. It's a wonderful time to just head to the library, head to a coffee shop, grind your papers out, grind your homework out. And you can even arrange it so you have maybe a three day weekend this semester. I'm supposed to have a three day weekend. And then that leaves a lot of free time in the evenings when a lot of those extracurriculars meet. So you have time to stay academically successful, but also, you know, stay socially involved, which is wonderful. Our next question is for Emmeline. And uh, Kara, you're more than welcome to add on if you would like. And someone asks, what are some of your favorite traditions? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I have a feeling we might have the same favorite tradition because this is a lot of people's favorite tradition. Um, but the week before our big game, so the big game is a Cal versus um, Stanford, which is our rival school just across the bay. Um, and every year, the week before, uh, the big game happens. We rally committee puts on all of these rallies um, and there's, you know, the bands out there. I remember one time waking up um, from a nap and in my unit one courtyard, the Cal band was just playing and Oski was dancing around and it's just the school spirit is just so high. Everyone's dressed in blue and gold is repping their school. Um, I know the band even goes down to like San Francisco and they, you know, even get people hyped for the big game there. Um, and so, yeah, there's just so much that goes on that week that I know a lot of students really enjoy. <laughs> yeah, I'll add on to that a little bit. It is so much fun, such high energy, good vibes all around. And this past year we won the ax, which is the trophy for the big game. And that was just so crazy. We won it back on Stanford's territory. We all rushed the field. It was just such an amazing moment, and I will definitely remember that forever. I definitely second, I guess third, both of what you said. I love big game. I especially love the week leading up to it because the campus is beautiful. There's blue and gold lights, there are events, there are rallies. The camp in Neely has projections on it, but there's also just this magical energy of excitement and joy around campus, anticipation. It's uh, one of my favorite times of year. <laughs> So our next question, uh, Emmeline, you can answer if you'd like. Uh, someone asked, do you have recommendations for the best places to study or hang out on campus? I know we run, mentioned this a little bit, but like your absolute favorite number one, please. Yeah, I know everyone's study types, I guess, is different. So some people like libraries, some people like, you know, just quiet in their dorms or whatever. Um, I love studying outside. Um, so as long as there's good Wi-Fi, my favorite spot is actually on Memorial Glade. Um, so like I mentioned at the very beginning, it's this big grassy area in front of Doe Memorial Library. Um, there are always students out there on a beautiful day. There's nothing that beats it. Um, just putting your blanket down, you know, having some snacks to, to get you through that paper that you have to write or to, you know, the, the problem set that you have to crank out and get done. Um, I think it's just a beautiful environment encourages me to do really well on my academics. Um, obviously, there are some times where you probably should just be cooped up and not have any distractions whatsoever. Um, but I would definitely say my favorite would have to be on Memorial Glade. I I love Memorial Glade as well. I find myself trying to mimic that feeling when I'm studying for my summer classes and I go to my local park and I'm like, oh, it's not the same. But I definitely love that space. Our next question is for Kara and someone asks, what was your freshman experience like? Did you have trouble making friends or finding a community? That's a good question. I think that's a question that a lot of people have and are kind of fearful about like my younger brother is actually going to be a freshman in college this year and I know he's a little bit worried about that but I had a great freshman experience I was able to make friends I kind of joined every single club that I could possibly find just so I could make some friends but also during our golden bear orientation which is like during the week leading up to classes I made a lot of friends there that I'm still in contact with which is awesome so we kind of made our first steps into college together, which is great. And I also had a couple of friends from high school also come to Berkeley. And while we're not like super like friends seeing each other every single day, we're still friends and we still like to go 
get coffee maybe once a month or something like that. So that's really nice, just having a little bit of home close by as well. And I actually was in FPF, which is the fall program for freshmen. It's only during the fall semester and the classes are a bit smaller. The campus is located a couple blocks away from the main campus. So it's a great place to kind of build up your confidence for like going in and being able to talk to professors or to your graduate student instructors. So I really think I learned a lot of great skills there. But I also just think that hanging out in my dorm in like a study lounge or just kind of in class, like you have to be brave enough to ask the person sitting next to you, hey, do you maybe want to study for this upcoming midterm together? And you can make friends that way. So there are lots of different avenues to get to that. And I think college is just a great time to build that confidence and be brave in letting you explore all of your options and kind of figuring out who you really are. Thank you. I definitely agree. And it can be a little bit daunting, especially coming in for the first time, but there are so many resources, clubs, opportunities available to you. Uh, GBO is one of my favorites. I was actually a GBO leader, so I'm a big fan of it. But honestly, as Kara mentioned, just talking to someone sitting next to you in your first class or for upcoming students, maybe in your first Zoom class, talking to someone in there and making a study group can become your lifelong friends. And I think that's magical and wonderful. And one of the great things about college, no matter where you go. So we just have a few minutes left. So we're gonna end with one question for the both of you. And that is, why Berkeley? What is your Berkeley story? What made you choose it? So we'll start with Emmeline and then go to Kara. Yeah, um, so I feel like my Berkeley story is a little bit unconventional, um, partly because I did not want to come to UC Berkeley. Um, the only reason why I even applied is because my mom came to Cal. Um, and so it was no more work for me. The UC app is all one application. And so it was one more click of a button. And I was like, Mom, OK, if you want me to apply, you can do it. That's fine. But there's no way I'm going. Um, but it turns out. <laughs> look at how it turned out. Um, but yeah, the main reason why I didn't want to come was because um, I had a lot of hesitancies about Cal. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I feel I heard a lot about the academic pressure and I thought it was going to be too competitive for me to handle. Um, in terms of our political activism, I was very intimidated by that. I'm not a super political person and that was very scary for me, um, especially hearing a lot of the extremes, you know, on the news. Um, and also the Berkeley City, I actually thought it was very cramped and I didn't really like it when I came for my college visit. Um, but every single day since I've been at Cal, those hesitancies have just been proved wrong over and over and over again. Um, in terms of the academic, uh, the rigor of it, Yes, classes can be hard. We are the number one public university and our academics can be difficult, but they're very doable. If you learn to time manage your classes, it's, it's super easy to be successful. Um, and not only that, but we're learning from the top people in their study in the entire world. We can learn from Nobel Prize winners. Like that's, that's not something that you can get at just any school. Um, in terms of the political activism, I've learn that it's, I think it's really cool and really um, awesome that people are advocating for what they believe in. Even if it's not necessarily something I agree with, I can at least respect that these students are going out of their way to advocate for um, what they think is right and what they think um, they, that what they think should be implemented into our society, into our campus, um, which just goes back to the idea that all Berkeley students are change makers. Um, and Beyond that too, just I've learned to, you know, the city of Berkeley has just really grown on me. Um, yes, it can be, you know, a little bit chaotic, feel a little bit chaotic sometimes, but it truly is a college town. And I don't think there's really anywhere in the world that is just like Berkeley. Um, and campus is absolutely beautiful. And I'm really bummed you guys weren't able to visit it in person. And I really hope you have that opportunity someday. Um, because even just look at my background, like, look at how beautiful that is. We get to come to this every single day. Um, so yeah, I, that's just, 
how I came here and I would encourage you guys as well if there you have any of those hesitancies um, or if you have any hesitancies that are other than those things I would just say your college experience is what you make of it um, and you will not regret coming to Berkeley if you um, take you know advantage of those opportunities that come to you um, so don't let those hesitancies be the reasons why you don't come to Cal but yeah that was my Berkeley story <laughs> All right. I actually kind of had something similar. I was not planning on applying to Berkeley because I thought it was too sciencey. And I was like, I'm not really interested in engineering or chemistry or anything like that. But again, my mom encouraged me to apply. She's like, you know what? You already finished writing all those personal statements. All you have to do is check another button. So I was like, well, San Francisco is a pretty cool place. So why not? So I ended up checking the button and then when I opened up the email, there was confetti and I cried of happiness. And so I decided to come to Berkeley after Cal Day, which is kind of our open house. And I'm really quite sad that no one has been able to experience that this year. But hopefully in the future, I just saw that there was so much energy and so much passion here on the UC Berkeley campus from all the students. And everyone was super supportive of everyone else's passions and ideas and I thought that was a great place to thrive and I'm so happy I went with this choice and I love this campus and it just makes me happy walking around and seeing the Campanile and looking out at the bay it's so amazing I really hope you get the opportunity to come visit Berkeley. Thank you so much for sharing your Berkeley stories. They are so inspiring and make my heart feel so full. That is the end of our presentation for today, but please contact us. Follow us on social media at Visit UC Berkeley. If you have any lingering questions and you didn't get answered, please email them to our account, tour at berkeley.edu, and a student ambassador will answer them. We also have a blog, so if you want to see other campus ambassadors just like us, talk about what it's actually like to be a Berkeley student Student, their experiences and their life, you can visit their talk blog. A different recorded virtual visit is available on our YouTube channel as well as our website if you like to go there and visit to review some information, come and have a look back. As mentioned earlier in our presentation, this is the 150th year of women at Berkeley. If you want to find more about how we are celebrating that, please visit 150w.berkeley.edu. If you want to learn more about the standing together message of our chancellor that I mentioned at the very beginning of this presentation or on how our campus is offering resources to our students during the COVID-19 crisis, please go to the links below. And lastly, if you would like to go and visit one of those admissions presentations to find some more specific information, especially you rising seniors who are entering the application cycle, please go ahead and visit that link below. Thank you so much for joining us today and we're gonna end today's visit with a Go Bears on three. One, two, three. Go, go Bears! Bears. <laughs> Have a wonderful rest of your day.